normally this is the part of the podcast where I'm like, hey, this is the only podcast hosted by blah, 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 blah. Look, I'm Dennis Farrell. That's Lars Fredrickson. We've got some housekeeping to do before we get to G Raver. And G, we apologize, but there's a few things we have to address here on the podcast before we jump in and have some fun with you. And it's not bad. Uh, I think the fans have kind of noticed the last few shows we've had. Petey Williams hasn't been here. The cat has been out of the bag. He is right now doing a tryout with the WWE as a producer. So congratulations. He will be back on. He's not gone. Uh, we are insanely proud of him because he's living his dream. And uh, he is, he, Lars, I mean, we. Well, I mean, you know, Petey's, I mean, Petey's 20 years in this business. He's, he's breaking his back. He's an inventor. You know, he's an innovator. You know what I mean? And the best of luck to him because he's got a great mind. He's a rad person. And I'm just hoping that the uh, WWE machine doesn't break his spirit. <laughs> uh, you know, it's never done that to another wrestler. So he shouldn't be ever, ever. ever. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But, but that, that, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of give you a segue because, you know, we're talking about an artist that we have here tonight. So please, if you would, if you would. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I oh, know wait, whoa. Oh. I know that you're not a fan of promoting your own work, but you yourself have something big coming out this month. Yeah, it's a brand new EP, six song EP, Lars Fredrickson. But you know what? I love all that shit. I've been talking about that all day. We got fucking G Raver here. Okay. And I'm a fan. I mean, this motherfucker talking about, I don't do nothing. I don't put my life on the line. This dude does. So, but I want to also thank you, Dennis, because you're a great producer and a great host. So please, Roll the introductions. Tell the people who this man is. Oh, my gosh. Gee, I, I never blow up Lars's spot. But when I know Lars is excited for me to see something because he turns into this amazing 12-year-old boy, and I love seeing it. And about a month ago, he's like, "You," because I'm not a death match wrestler guy. And he's been right. slowly trying to convert me. So he'll slowly send me, like, PG – PG 13 rated R stuff. <laughs> and he's like, you have to check out this G Raver guy. It started with the best of clip. Then he went into a couple matches here. There was a couple with you in shellac. There was once uh, one with you. Was it once in a lifetime in New York? I believe that he sent me a match of, and I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm squeamish. I, I'm for this show. I'm wearing a Britney Spears shirt to highlight how big of a pussy I am. So, <laughs> so it's actually the first thing I noticed. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes, that is it. And I did it ironically to show the highlight that I'm I'm the biggest sissy on the podcast here. <laughs> Holy cow! I'm watching these matches. I I have a tear roll down my eye. Legitimately, I'm not trying to hype it up because I'm squeamish and I and I I I hate watching people break their bodies to make a dollar. And here you are doing it at the highest level. And, and this amazing art. And I can only imagine that you have an IV full of ibuprofen walking around <laughs> with you at all times. Because I, I saw you take bumps off a ladder. You're the, I've seen a million death matches now because of Lars. You're the only guy that can constantly is married to a cinder block. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And, you know, I think I married that cinder block because of it was like I, once me and Jeff Cannonball had a tournament of death match and I was like, well, what can something we could do new with the cinder box? Like I was just kind of like get, trying to think of something that was outside of that box. And I'm like, no one's ever taped like light tubes to them. So let's like do that. So like ever since then, it was like, yeah, you do all the stuff with cinder blocks. So does Jeff Cannonball. Like he's like married to it too. I don't know why, but just because we got a little bit extra creative and people are like, oh, they're good with that. <laughs> <laughs> well one of the things that i that i know that you're married to is a bag of salt and vinegar chips so uh, yeah. yes and we had epi on here at one point and he told me that he and he said that that was the thing that legit legitimately hurt the most where did you get the fucking idea of that because i remember i was watching i was showing my probably not the best father fatherhood moment but i'm showing my, my nine-year-old some of your matches and yeah. When the salt and bag, the salt and vinegar bag of chips came out, that's when Soren actually went, "Oh, that's gonna hurt." Like, yeah. not, so it, the it idea, was, it was his idea. Like, he's the one that he's the one that like came out was like, "Yo, I got this great idea." He's like, "You know, like, because our biggest thing is like when somebody can relate to something, 
like it's kind of like when you get hit in the balls like everybody knows what like getting hit in the balls feels like so like you want to take that next level okay maybe you had a cut on your finger from work and you, you went you went to get your salt and vinegar chips and you were like ah fuck you know like ah it fucking burns well imagine if you had like your whole bag <laughs> covered in this shit and you're dumping salt and vinegar on well he he's the one that brought that to me and I, I knew right away what he was thinking and i'm like what the fuck and it's funny because a lot of people we kind of we we, we joint took custody of that idea because at one point then a t-shirt company was like uh graver's salt and vinegar chips t-shirt can that be done and i'm like sure but let me make sure effie's cool with it uh so at the very top of it i put an effie product and then it's G Ravers salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> so it's a little nod to like whether fans knew it or not. Like, you know, we both kind of it, it adapted the idea together, but it was his idea originally. Like he brought it to the table. So if they were gonna that, merge, you know. Yeah, but that he he didn't mention that actually. I don't remember him mentioning that at all. I think he gave you all the credit. So he probably didn't want to take, and 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 it's you know, bless him for that, but at the same time, like. I was on the same the whole other page with that. So any merchandise, any future chip branding that's going to involve a Effie product involved in that too. <laughs> but yeah, talk about it. It's like a visceral thing. You know what I mean? Like it's very right. related. So that's what I love about that. Yeah. Watching death matches. And I'm really, at first when I started watching, I'm just like, this has to be chaos, unplanned chaos. And after talking with a few of the guys on the podcast, I'm starting to learn that there's a philosophy. Now, death matches on the indie versus jet death matches at uh, GCW because they, I feel like they have more kind of of a television uh, setup. Is there yeah. a difference when you when you go into a death match at GCW compared to on the indies? Um. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna say that. Uh... I, I'm going to say it has everything to do with the talent involved. Um, there's so many different ways that you can approach uh, your uh, mindset or outlook about how you want to go about something like this. But uh, depending on the people and the performers that do it, whether or not you are kind of considered what uh, some would be like a, um, you know, a little bit of a, a, a having a little feng shui from everything. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Um, there's real dynamic uh, wrestlers and stuff like that where, you know, they've taken a little bit of wrestling and made sure that it was more about wrestling than what it was about every single weapon that was involved. And whether the weapon was involved, it was also set up very um, meticulously and kind of methodically to where that you're building to it, so on and so forth. Now, I can see where people have watched uh, other death matches in independent wrestling or, you know, things like that. And just kind of did this carefree hack and slash kind of thing. And some guys have, have made a successful career out of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not uh, particularly smashing on that, but um, I think it's also a matter of just how you're setting it up and, and, and the way you're going about it. Are you, do you care more about the, the match or do you care more about where the weapons are? You know what I mean? Like, if you can sit there and say all day, and like, oh, we're going to go out, and the minute we go out, we're going to do this and throw me through this thing here or, th or hit me with that thing over there. Um, I don't know if that's really a basis of where to go. You know what I mean? If you, uh, if you create it more on a level where you're like, wow, I really want to watch this performer do his thing and get to that point, you have then not made it about, you know, uh, particularly just weapons it's an anticipation to that you know what i mean it's it's a it's a i can't wait to see where they go if they're going on this level now when are they going to get to this and what are they going to do when they reach this point which is you know your light tubes your fucking your fire spot your you know your crazy glass table blah 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 thumbtacks whatever so i think that has a lot to do with some of the differences uh and there's a lot of guys in the gcw locker room that think that same way uh, we were all kind of brought up in that in that realm. Uh, we are that generation uh, that's hanging on. I mean, now with uh, me, Alex Cologne, um, a couple other guys, you know, uh, you know Matt Tremont. Uh, we we're all about 15 years, 16 years in, and uh, we're a part of that like attachment. The guys like you know uh, Denny Havoc, Thumbtack Jack, um, 
these uh, Hayabusa's, things like that. Uh, we attached ourselves to Sabu's, another guy. Uh, mm -hmm. We attached ourselves to those kind of people. And you can tell the people that played off those guys and the people that played off other guys, of course, you know, your, your hack and slash guys or your Bruiser Brodies. <coughs> so that would be the number one thing that would separate the differences sometimes. And you'll get some, you know, uh, what I call, I mean, there's definitely some stuff out there. Don't get me wrong. And I'm just like, this is ignorant shit. This is just complete. <laughs> you? <laughs> this is complete and shit. <laughs> no, I do not believe this. I've just, I, I, I've watched oh. highlight videos of you being back body dropped off the top of a ladder and watching you fall lifelessly to the floor. And you're like, there's some ignorant stuff out there. You're a yeah. badass, my friend. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I just, I'm just a sucker for like, man, I, I, I don't know. I try to always remember when I go out, man, like when I was a kid, um, what I was staring at and like, I was like, man, like what, what was the crazy thing that would happen? You know, that you would be like, oh man, like, man. And you, you felt like there's no way you didn't get your money's worth. Like you were like, oh man, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what happened on the show. That match was cool and blah, blah, blah. So I always look at wrestling as a, as a whole kind of like that. I mean, I looked at like that for everyone. And I hope everybody, you know, kind of brace, embraces that when it, when it comes to wrestling, because that way you, I think you turn out a product that you uh, subconsciously, you know, kind of already are like, all right, I know where I'm at. Like, I, I want it to be like, you know, me revisiting my childhood kind of thing. So it's kind of cool to look at it that way. Well, you know, one of the things that I grabbed onto and, 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 and I want to sort of reiterate because what you're talking about is telling that story yeah, and yeah. building it up, building the tension, the psychology. And I think the great deathmatch wrestlers do that. And like you said, there are some hack and slash things out there. You know what I mean? That's just, it's all violence. It's, it's not, it's not about, you know, anything but the violence, which it can be cool. But yeah. like when you have, when you tell us the story in that match, that's, I think, uh, where, where I feel like th that deathmatch wrestler greatness happens because it's not just the blood and guts. There's actual uh, uh, technique into it. So I guess, I guess for me, my, my question, you know, uh, I have to ask one for my 10-year-old, so please let me re uh, – yeah. but I'll, I have to get back because he wanted me to ask you a question. But um, my, my question to you is, is um, you know, when you were trained in wrestling, was it just a, a, at a traditional wrestling school? Yes, um, this was uh, this was something that a lot of been and more so coming out now more than ever. I don't know why, but and people had asked me, you know, what school did I go to? And at the time I went to uh, CZW Shikara Wrestle Factory. Uh, CZW Shikara Wrestle Factory at one point was a branded together type thing. They were very much in business with each other. Uh, and that was uh, John Zandig and Mike Quackenbush at the time, uh, you know, uh, Craig Bush does him right now is out of the business uh, for reasons of his own. Uh, but it wasn't really him that had handle in it. Uh, the guys that had handle in it, which I credit a lot to, um, which at the time was um, uh, Chris Hero and yep. uh, Claudio Castanoli. <laughs> and that's where I got a majority of my training through was uh, with Chris and, and Claudio. And um, uh, we'd have Sky to come down to, uh, sometimes too from Mexico and stuff like that. Um, couple guests and things like that but and then whenever i switched schools which i i kind of always wanted to be a part of the czw product now granted if i look back on my on my on my training i would have stuck with shikar just to kind of see you know how far i really kind of want to went with that um and granted i learned a lot from it and i still use a lot of that today which a lot of my lucha background things like that was all from chris and, uh, you know, so I always contribute to that. And I always like, I always like secretly thank him in a way, because if I didn't have that element, I don't think, and I brought that element into just wrestling and then also into just deathmatch, deathmatch wrestling. So I, I always, always, always take a nod to that, but I then jumped schools over to CZW, which was, uh, uh DJ Hyde at the time and, uh, John Dahmer, John Dahmer, I credit a lot more to, uh, my training than I do anybody, uh, as far as that's concerned. I mean, a lot of help, a lot of uh, people would come in guests there too, uh, mm -hmm. from CZW at the time. We, I even had a couple of classes with Trent Acid and stuff like that before he passed away. Uh, you know, and a bunch of different guys that came in through, uh, at the time, but yeah, it was CZW Shakar Wrestle Factory. It was nothing but, you know, wrestling. They weren't teaching us how to bump in, you know, light tubes or anything like that, or, 
no craziness. I actually learned more lucha right off the start than I did right. anything else. Yeah. Do you want to ask your 10 year old's question? Yeah. So Soren, my 10 year old, uh, yeah. wants to know, and, and maybe, and this actually might be helpful for the, the, the people out there that might yeah. not be too familiar with you, but where and how did the origin of the name G Raver come from? <laughs> this one's really cool. Uh, uh, because it has nothing to do with like me doing it on purpose, but it was like something that I just kind of embraced. Uh, I did, I, 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 a girl I dated in, in middle school, her name was uh, Deanna. And I still talk to Deanna this day, to this day. And it's funny because whenever I tell her this comes up, I, I give her full credit for this. Uh, in I'd say uh, middle school, I started to wear the, um, uh, the Jenkos that had, you know, the, the wider pants at the time. Yeah. And it was a very short phase, to be honest, but <laughs> I, I, the Jenkos and those UFOs, right? And at lunchtime, she used to like, for whatever reason, all the time, she just get, would yell out, yo, G-Raver. And it would be like, <laughs> my last name is Graver. But she just separated it because of the fucking, the pants. And and that's legitimately where my name came from. And I hated it, dude. I hated it for so long. My friends would be like, oh, Raver, what's up? Yo, G, what's up? And then we'd call me either G, they would call me Raver. Uh, nobody called me Brandon. And for whatever reason, I just, I kept it going, man. I was like, I'm just going to let it live. <laughs> that's where that's going to, that's going to fall so short on him. Like, I'm going to try to reiterate that story to him. He's just going to be like, Trust what? Because you know, my ex-girlfriend, yeah. middle school, <laughs> had nothing to do with wrestling. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm trying to connect with here, with you on this question, but I started podcasting in 2009 before the boom happened boom happens everybody has a podcast i go from like the top to like way down here oprah's doing a podcast people there are like what are podcasts are doing it now deathmatch wrestling is widely accepted you have matt cordona coming in it's becoming more mainstream is is there a little bitterness that like hey i was i was like ground floor worked my way up brick by brick and now all of a sudden, you know, the Sunday morning deathmatch guys come in, get all kinds of attention, pop right back out. And here you are still having to beat that dusty old road down to the next town. You know, I could sit here and I could say that if I thought at any point that what they had done now, I'm going to speak for Cardona on this one. Uh, Cardona, me and him get along pretty damn well. And we've been enjoying, I'm actually going to see him tomorrow. Um, but we get along pretty damn well for the first of all, because we're both into like action figures and crazy shit like that. And he was a part of my storyline essentially um, and how he was brought in and how he was taken out. And then I came out towards the end. If he bastardized in any way, what I considered to be deathmatch wrestling for a first time go and what he did, like applaud because yeah. he's the last guy, the last guy I would ever say that's going to be, oh, Zack Ryder, woo woo woo. He's going to be in the <laughs> ring. He's going to be in the ring with covered in light tubes with Nick Gage someday. Like you would tell me that. And there's no way that you, there's no way I would have picked him out of a, a lineup, you know, of people. And he came in there and he, dude, he went in. And I didn't, I didn't expect that at all. But uh, as far as the, uh, yeah, um, more on broader, uh, a, a broader look on deathmatch wrestling. I I have no qualms with that whatsoever. We when when Nick faced Jericho on on national TV because right there's one part of this scheme that has never been a part of it as far as deathmatch wrestling. No one's ever said on national television. Uh, now we have a national tev- television show broadcasting a deathmatch re- a deathmatch within Jericho and Nick Gage with light tubes and people, the general audience are now seeing this. What does that now do for products like GCW or products, you know, that, that involve deathmatch wrestling or guide people in directions of where is more of this? Because that's what it was all about then. When, when I was getting into deathmatch wrestling, I saw, you know, uh, you know, it's, it, we had uh, juggalos overdubbed over top of, uh, you know, like deathmatch tapes and that was the strangle manias yeah. and things like that. You know what I mean? Like that's when I saw that, I was like, there's gotta be more of this. 
there's got to be more of this. And I went, oh, wait, there's this whole world in Japan called FMW, mm -hmm. blowing up people in cages, blowing up, having explosion death matches. Then there's uh, a tournament every year. And that was my segue in. That was much harder to figure out than now in this world, in today's world, where you now have a national television saying, here, go ahead, have this deathmatch wrestling, and I want you to, to take part in it and, and see what it's like, you know. Lars, I got to follow up, but this one's for you. As a fan of deathmatch wrestling, how do you feel about it? Because you're on the other end, and in an industry where a rock band – goes from little indie shows, they blow up, all of a sudden it's you guys sold out, and really, it's they're making it a living. It, do you, I, I don't know, maybe that's a stretch of a comparison, but as a fan, how do you view it? Well, I mean, what did they sell out? They sold out a building. Right, exactly. You know I'm what I mean? So, yes. I mean, like, so, I mean, when I first discovered, like, you know, because I have been on the other end of that sort of uh, debate, and it's normally those who live in glass houses that throw those stones, right? So, and also there's like this thing of like, that's mine. You know what I mean? And it's like, I discovered the deathmatch stuff from tape trading, you know, years ago, you know, Wing and FMW and, you know, Cactus Jack, Terry Funk, you know, and then that was my gateway. Then then I'd see in June, June Kasai, you know, these guys, Ito, thing, you know, Abdullah Kobayashi, you know, people like this. You know what I mean? And then CZW happens, you know, after that. And then now we got an American version of this thing. And then now these guys in GCW and, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a couple other promotions that do this, uh, obviously. And um, now you're seeing a boom with it. So for me as a fan, if I got more options to watch what I enjoy, I embrace that. Right. But you know, I also, I, I, but I, and I never quite got why people would, would, would bash on something that they loved if it gets a little bit more popular and gets more eyes on it. Because honestly, what these guys are doing, they should be making a lot more fucking money because they're putting their bodies on their line. Hence nice. my next question, you fucking almost die. You, you know, you, 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 uh, you know, sever some tendons in your, in your arm, right? And you and you've cool. lost a, a percentage of the you know, mobility, if I'm correct. And it's jolted, if that. <laughs> right. And you were and you were a tattoo artist, right? So I mean, that's so, like your th that's gone, right? Because I mean you need both hands to do that. And yep. so I mean, for me, it's like I think that the deathmatch uh fan, I, at least I, I would feel the, the ones that I know root for these guys, you know what I mean? And want to see the, a Nick Gage on national television. Cause it's kind of like when the Ramones made it to the rock and roll hall of fame, you got that same feeling like, Oh shit. One, you know, I'm sure that they're saying one of us got there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how Rancid or whatever band felt like when the Ramones made it, it was like, Oh, finally we're there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, no, I, maybe you could reiterate or you know, no, elaborate. I, sorry. I think that I always used to say, if you're in the, if you're in any, any way, shape or form involved in the music business, you are already, you already know what it's like to be in the wrestling business. It's that same, that same theory, that same factor of working your way up of, of, of playing the low, the low end of the totem pole and then playing the larger one. And then when you start to start to have this incline of just good, 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 Everybody does. They claim some sort of ownership over sometimes uh, feeling like they need to, to they need to be like, oh, well, he sold out because he did it on TV with Jericho or he did that. And it's the same thing. You get the same fans, but you also have more fans nowadays that will start to embrace that a little bit more. And, it, and as far as workers are concerned, yeah, I, I think it comes with that. I don't feel that wrestling owes me nothing. But at the same time, it's like you want you want to be successful in what you do. So you hope that where you couldn't necessarily see it breeding success in it as far as money is concerned. If you just attack the money of that of that uh, story and you say ah, the money will come, the money will come, I, the money is going to stay right here as far as independent wrestling and deathmatch wrestling. But if you're starting to perform it on another scale, we're talking a whole different realm because independent wrestling knows this scale. What does a major television product that wants to put this on on somewhat of a regular level by chance or maybe just build to it with storyline up until a point where they have a death match? 
which is I'm all game for because right now in independent wrestling, I don't want to, I don't want to do deathmatch wrestling unless it's telling that story. Right. So now you have that on a grander scale, making more money, possible ways to make more money, possible ways to think of that. We weren't, we weren't even invited into that story uh, years ago. We weren't even considered. Uh, if you, if you were, if you were bleeding, you are not getting on national television. If you were bleeding, you were not getting on. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of factors in nowadays where, you know, they're considering that, which is, that's to me is wild. That in itself alone, uh, you know, of course now with, you know, different ways of looking at it, but really, I mean, also anybody ever had to do was say, Hey, go get blood tested. And if you're good, then yeah, you could do that. You can bleed over here. You could do that over on the scale, but it was just that you bled. It was a no go, you know. Yeah. So hey, we're well, opening the world a whole new world uh, of uh, possibility. Why wouldn't anybody want to get excited about it? that? Would be like me getting mad because some of these kids that have been in three years in because they have the power of social media, they got a quicker rise. And and I had to do it the hard way. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, man. You know, one hundred percent. I mean, because, you know, we've seen guys, you know, and I guess my question is because you got guys like Moxley, you got guys like Sammy Callahan, who basically cut their teeth at yeah. CZW and these levels. And now these guys like Moxley's a world champion. Right. And, yeah. you know, uh, hope he does, you know, you know, yeah. send positive vibes his way. Yeah, I've had man. my truck, you know, so uh, and send love. And I just actually got his book today and I've already oh. started reading it. And Let me know. It's. It's um, super good so far. You know, it okay. sounds like him talking to you. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's very, very well written. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, so we see these guys, you know, that, that have been able to take, you know, even Triple uh, XL, you know, the tag team. What do, is, it, uh, is it Deuce? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, the D- Deuce? Well, both of them. Both of them have done deathmatch stuff before. Yeah. Both. Uh, um, their names are escaping me. You, I, shit. I know. It's, it's bothered me. I get names. <laughs> I'm I'm losing some wrestling points. Uh, anyways, but um, long story short, you know there there is guys that are in the limelight and and have been successful, but started with the deathmatch stuff. So I figured it was only a matter of time before we were going to see that. Then we see this Chris Jericho thing. But like, I mean, you see guys like Moxie be successful. You see guys like Sammy Callahan be successful. Does it ever like? Did you ever think like, well, shit, maybe I can take that road too? Yeah, I'm more so now than any, and I feel like now. Don't get me wrong, I'm 36, so I feel like if I do do it, it's going to be a short stint, a little something, and I'm fine with that. But it's never like I've been excited, like because I love what AEW does. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of AEW because I got so many friends over there. Um, now more than ever, I see you know obviously more talent coming through that uh, just surpasses the idea that they would ever be there. And even now, we're now with Punk being there, and, uh, and now we got all these different talents that are coming up. And now Daniel, Daniel Bryan, and I'm like, like the fact that I'm not watching it as as enough as I think I am. I, I try to look through like social media and stuff like that, and just try to see where they're doing and what they're doing, just to kind of be like keep an eye on things. But I don't sit down, and I, I actually want to physically sit down and watch like a lot of this stuff. And that's been a first time for a while because I mean especially you being a wrestler, being a performer, any performer yeah. will tell you they don't really, re- really watch wrestling. They just kind of get the, uh, the summary like that. But when you want to pay attention to something so much that you want to know how they're telling their stories or how they're building their things, that makes you excited to be one and part of that. And mm-hmm. for me, I just want, if, if I can be, I would love to be, if I have a short stint, I have a couple, I don't care if it's two weeks of dark, I'll be happy and I'll be satisfied and I will, I will be able to bow out because I said that when I went to Japan and it was me and Jun Kasai, that that was the, the, the upper echelon. That was the top level for me uh, as far as independent wrestling. And, and to me, it was just because of the outcome of it. And uh, you know, but now I do now, I definitely see myself uh, trying to shoot for something of that uh, in that realm. So even if it's just the dark, I, I'm, I'll be fucking, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> now, when this podcast comes out, uh, I've, I would have already been at my very first GCW show here in Detroit for my birthday. 
Uh, we're now a week or two away from what November 27th, Lars, when your album drops six, six, 26, on, 26, yeah. 26 plugs. So okay. I'll slip that in um, there. Yeah, that was nice. Smooth. Uh, are you, were you at that show? It was great to meet you, by the way. Uh, thank you so much for, for everything that you gave me at that show. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem. Right around the time here, by the way. Yeah, it's no problem. But, and I know I got your shirt a little wet with blood. That's all right. <laughs> and, and, and I got it out of my Britney shirt. I couldn't believe the people there didn't murder me. Um, yeah, you wear that, you're effed. <laughs> but in all fairness, you're 36. You have a life changing injury. Then yeah. you go back and try to move again. And by the way, Lars is the one who made me watch all this stuff. I had no clue. My my jaw drops because uh, I I compared to an athlete who who has a major injury and then they're afraid they're going to re-injure themselves, so they are gingerly playing the rest of their career or for the that year. You yeah. go back up for the second time. Were you scared? Was nervousness? I yo I I'm gonna point out that. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's kind of reminds me of when you're such a, uh, when you're the certain type of wrestling fan that kind of points out and notices details of such things. Uh, even when it's just like, Hey, like, you know, a piece of gear they wore back in like a, an old, you know, an old match and they're revisiting that. And it's the fan. There's that one fan that stands out there and I don't care. I love it. If it's one fucking guy, I'm like, if they're in the back and they're going, yo, he wore that on this date because of this reason. And for that reason, and you know why that they're embracing that? You know why that there was a few people that hit me up that day that were like, that said uh, very similar, but you were, Lars, you were number one as far as um, uh, reiterating this to me, which is they, they said that they felt the nervousness. They felt the, uh, the, the emotion that kind of took over and you would not believe the amount um, prior to this, even the day before. Uh, and I... <laughs> And I had kind of, I, I don't know, I guess I set myself in a weird place prior, but I knew that this had to end with that same spot. Right. Deep down in my head, I knew, I didn't know right away, but I, deep down, a couple months after doing it, like two matches, me and Jimmy, I'm like, you know that this spot has been in every promo, it's been in everything, it's been literally the catalyst for why this is even taking place. And I feel like, and I said to Jimmy, I remember the day I said to Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, this has to end. It doesn't matter what we do. We don't have to top anything we did. We don't have to do. We don't have to take that next step to the match being uh, surpassing glass ceiling, surpassing barbed wire, surpassing any of that. We have to do one thing, just that spot. And I knew the day when we got there and we, we, we did a little ladder test. We climbed up the ladder and we just put each other in the position at the top of the ladder. And I went, oh, and he went at the same time. He went, oh, and I'm like, who? I'm like, that's never happened before. And he goes, did you have like that, that sinking feeling in your gut? And I'm like, yeah. And I've never had that. I've never had that and not happen. Not with two people, just myself. I've had it happen, but I'm talking. The only time I ever get that is watching those stupid roof runners <laughs> that run on the roof. <laughs> That's the only time I get that. And I said, dude, this is fucked, man. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm like, man. And then it was even worse because Alex Cologne was making fun of me. And uh, <laughs> cause, cause he goes, Alex is like, yo, he's like, I heard you got bad juju on you because of last night. And I'm like, because the night before I did a promo with Jimmy where I ate pages out of the Bible and, and I chewed up the Bible pages. And then I go into this. I'm like, well, that's, <laughs> he's like, I heard you got bad juju because you ate the Bible pages. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm screwed. You know what I mean? Like, did I just, <laughs> did I just inadvertently like screw myself? And once we we're up there, man, and the adrenaline was going, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you how it felt. I was ready for something. And it was, I was just like, you know, if I do this and this is it, this is, and I re, re cut open my arm. I don't know what's going to happen, but I had to just, I had to put myself back there because the biggest thing I hate the most is, is having this carry this fear of never wanting to do something again. Um, now, granted, I would never do this spot again. 
And that's for respect out of that and what that meant for me. And I would hope that no one would ever attempt it again. But, you know, that that you were when you were when you messaged me about that right away, like like I, I put my head there and I was like, man, this is wild that, you know, like people were even looking at it like that. And I did get a couple messages, you know, therefore after that understood that or that followed it that that way. But, uh, you know, there's only a few. And it was it was those guys, the guys that meticulously or even pay attention to why these things mean the way that they they are. And sometimes people don't want to look at wrestling that deep. But that's true. It's what it is. I mean, that's that was that everything you said was circumference exactly what I was feeling like 100 percent. So thank you, though. And that, and that meant the world to hear that from you afterwards, because uh, I know you're a wrestling fan. I know you uh, appreciate certain things. And and when that comes from the right place, you, you get an extra good feeling about it. So I appreciate that, man. Well, much respect for 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 doing what you did. I mean, because it, it, what it was was inspiring because you know, you can tell when somebody is walking through and smashing down that fear or just whatever it is and getting through it. And that was the period of the end of the sentence after all you and Jimmy Lloyd have done together, right. you know, the art that you've made, the chemistry that you have, the stories that you fucking told, that was like the period at the end of the sentence. That's like the thing every wrestling fan wants, you know, yeah. they don't want it, but they don't want it in three weeks. They want it over time. Like you guys gave it, you know? Yeah. And that was over a long fucking period of time, I, you know, I, I, it, for like a year, dude. Like when I think about it, I'm like, we almost went a full fledged year of just up until October of just wrestling each other. And I'm like, this is insane. I've wrestled no one but Jimmy for, for like a year. <laughs> it's just, it seemed absurd. I wrestled other people, but it just felt like with me and him. And that's what I love though, is that they let us tell that story. GCW really, uh, you know that was part of the part of the deal was that if I did come back into this and I did it in this way, I really wanted to be able to tell that story in the way I wanted to tell it with promos and uh, everything. And I, I really wanted a lot of love and care behind it. Mm -hmm. So it was very a, a very well thought out painting, and and that's how I looked at it. And I was very happy to have tell, to be able to tell that story exactly how I wanted it done, and how it how it eerily landed to stretch it out with that date and that exact date and exact time keep in mind i know lockdown. that's crazy that's fucking so auspicious that's crazy yeah, this was not set in stone this was not that we did not know that that was going to happen and the, the fact that yeah that it landed on there i because it came to a point where lauderdale's like you know gcw he's the owner um he was like do you want to you want to keep this going because do you realize that this ends if you guys hold off and keep it going till this, it will land on the same date and the same time, same events taking place. I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, that's the synchronicity of though. You know, that's like, that's so crazy. You know what I mean? Maybe the Bible pages helped you. You know I what I mean? <laughs> well, but one it, of the things uh, you, but listen, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. But since yeah. we both know KG, Yes. And I, Dennis, I know, is going to pop for this story. But tell me about having some food with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right. Look, I, I went out. There was two Japanese girls after, after the show. I wrestled. I just wrestled June Kasai. Mm -hmm. uh, had a banger of a match. I was super happy on Cloud9. I'm already on Cloud9 because I'm in Japan. Okay. These girls would say, hey, do you want to go to this place? after called the piano bar and if you're I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this that if you go to japan there's these tiny bars within it within a uh like a, almost an alleyway and almost all points uh shinjinko would be one a place that had like a lot of this stuff and you go in there and it's literally like a four by four little like no bigger than this like kitchen like little area and maybe like a bar area there's one called the deathmatch bar um that has a lot of horror inspired stuff like that in it and it's literally like seriously no kidding you either four by four or maybe smaller right but the, the downstairs on the lower level or upstairs on a higher level you can either go through there and you order your drinks and go to the top so we're there we're there for hours right just me these two japanese girls and they're like two friends there are two friends get ready to leave there was like maybe two people in front of us before that that's, that's about all you can fit in these rooms these people leave they go down 
boom, they're gone, blah, blah, blah. We're sitting there just bullshitting, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I, there's more people coming up. And I just kind of, you know, I, I, a slight glance. And I'm like, I'm like, I think that's, is that Quentin Tarantino? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh my God, it is. He sits down. Now, I don't even, now keep in mind, I don't notice anybody else really. There was like three other people with him. And another one was a girl. And then eventually a guy came up from downstairs that was part of their uh, music or production team as far as music was concerned. And the other lady was like her PR, uh, 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 hang along and that sort of thing. And other than that, these two other people. I'm sitting there and I was getting, I was actually getting ready to light a cigarette. And before I lit the cigarette, the only thing I asked him, I said, you know, I'm like, I'm like excuse me. I'm like, you guys don't mind a cigarette, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to bother him if I was smoking. But I pretty much, you know, I didn't say much to him. And he goes, you know, like, oh, I, wow. He's like, I didn't even notice, you, you, you know, what was actually happening over there. He's like, you're speaking English. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, I'm here for wrestling. And he's like, wrestling. And he's like, oh, you know, he's like, wow. Um, he's like you mean like professional wrestling i'm like yeah like you know you know wwe wwf and that sort of thing and he goes wow hold on he goes first of all go ahead and smoke your cigarette he's like i'm not worried about it and then this guy leans over just kind of out of the you know to to, to the right takes off his mask because he had a mask on and he was vaping because he would like he would just like pull the mask up and just like vape and then and then blow it out and he goes by the way can i have a cigarette and that's leonardo dicaprio I'm like, like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on here. And I'm like, what is going on? And next thing you know, it's just us sitting, uh, relating, uh, you know, movies and, and TV and story all to wrestling. It's just us talking back and forth, having a good time, enjoying each other's company. And by the end of it, uh, you know, they were getting ready to take off and they're like, you know, they're like, they're like, Brandon, you have a really awesome story. They're like, this is really cool. Um, uh, if you come downstairs, would you, would you take a picture with us? And I'm like, take a like, I'm gonna ask you for a picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Not only did DiCaprio take a picture at the top of my head because me and Kasai had really like drove my head into the map full of glass. <laughs> I had all these cuts, slashes all over me. And uh, so he took a picture of the top of my head and uh, then afterward got a group photo and then we got one together. Uh, I, I asked him if we, he would take it. Um, DiCaprio and, and, and uh, uh, Tarantino said uh, that they appreciated me telling my story the way I did with them and that uh, they thought my story was great. Uh, and they hope that I continue and, and you know, continue some sort of success with it. And I was like, for him to say that to me, and I'm like, well, you know, and here I didn't even know until like they left. I was like, what are you, what were you guys here for? Of all this time that we'd spent, I didn't ask you not one time why you were here. And he goes, we're actually here for the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood premiere. Oh, wow. Because the, the next day they had, and it was all over the news on Japanese news, uh, did them doing the red carpet, you know what I mean? So I was like, holy shit, like, then the next day, seeing them on the red carpet on the TV, I was like, wow, this is insane. <laughs> we turned around, we went in the bar, and we just were going to, we were just going to go back in and chill. Uh, we took the picture, said goodbyes, and the owner of the bar said that they had paid for our entire time that we had been there. So they paid for all of our drinks prior. We were there for hours before them, like getting wow. drinks. Uh, they paid for our, our tab, and, and that was it. And then we got a picture. And of course, my picture, you can see it on my Instagram. Uh, it's, um, you know, you can see it clear as day. <laughs> and it's literally <laughs> only in this tiny deserted alleyway, <laughs> which is really, I don't know. It's very cool. It's, that's more than very cool. I <laughs> fucking Talk awesome. About, like, yeah, like, I mean, there's just, there's no other way to like, I, like I said, I was already on cloud nine. But like to do that, like, and for my friends to like, it was funny because of how long they didn't believe me <laughs> for how long, because <laughs> they were like, because I was acting so chill. I said, dude, you get 90% better results if you just act chill and just pretend that they're people too and give them their space and be polite. I think the, the most, the big, the best thing I think I, th I could have done was ask them about my cigarette smoke. You know what I mean? Like, right. 
uh, that that was really segued into you know uh, you know not being a dickhole. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, yeah, dude, and and dude, it was it was you should see my phone blowing up at the time. Uh, Joey Janela was blowing me up real hard. <laughs> he 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 was like it's one of his favorite you know directors. So I understand oh. where he was coming, but he also understood where I was coming from because I was like, dude, I'm not just gonna invite a bunch of people over here right now into their you know, into their personal space and, and kind of mess that up for them, you know, mess their vibe up. So it was, it was right. I was just, once I had the picture, I sent it in our group message. It was in there with KG. uh, (laughs) Everybody was on the thing and they were just like, holy shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's wild. (laughs) You fucked up my whole vibe. We got time for one more question a piece and Fuck you for telling that amazing story. I'm just going to say that now because. I was mind blown. It is because I, I can't even go back to my story. My, my question, I get, you know what? I guess I will. Uh, And it's going to be a downer now. Thanks guys. Um, You were in the mood. You have this injury that changed your life. And I know you guys kind of touched on it a little bit. Uh, What did that do for your tattooing career? Did it, did it, is it over now? because of this um, injury? It, I, I, I have this, 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 uh, of course, when it first happened, I mean, I thought everyone, everything was done. I, you, you don't, you never think of anything positive right away. Like when something like this happens, because you have now altered and you have physically altered your normal life, mm. um, which is something you don't really, when you really sit and think about it, like I didn't change just wrestling. I changed my normal everyday life, like tying shoes, um, just brushing teeth, like every wow. little aspect that you think, like playing video games, that is not easy, like by any means. Like I, if I showed you, I've explained it to Alex one time how I play video games. He's a huge video game fan. And he's like, no, no, he's like not having it. Like, he's refusing it but like even when like and people are like oh brushing teeth like what do you do like when you hold the toothbrush you're like you know oh i got the toothbrush you hold it but you you have a hard ass time and so what you do is you lay the toothbrush down you put the toothpaste on it you take it or you put it in your mouth and you put the toothpaste on it that way you know what i mean small things like that you can't manage and function so think of those things and relearning them all over again in a certain way the small little things that we all get so acquainted with uh greg uh, gregory iron said the best thing he's the one that helped me learn how to tie my shoes and if you know greg uh he's one he, he had he's in wrestling he's in 440 gimmick right now uh he has several palsy he's had it since his birth um he he even said to me do you know how much harder it is for a guy like you to have gone your whole life knowing things one way and then all of a sudden it comes to a, a stop mm. how difficult that can be sometimes you know what i mean that's way more harder for a guy that's been born with it their whole way so you find your your ways around it and for me now it's been two years i'm, I'm getting acquainted with what i know what i can do with it as far as wrestling as far as uh you know my everyday life so now I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very much at first. You're just like, it's no void. It's done. I'm not, I'm not doing it. But the more and more I go, the more and more I say like, Hey, can I stretch the skin? If I push down on it, if I, you know, go like this, or I try to find different ways to, to go about finding, you know, what way I can do it. So now more recently, and it's actually, I, I started uh, on a couple of friends of mine. They're kind of offering their skin to me and I'm giving it a go. Cause I'd like to get back to it just because it is something I do love, but I didn't love it. I didn't love it enough that I wanted to always uh, consistently embrace it, but I wanted it to be there for me. If I ever had something like this happen to me, well, I didn't factor in if something like this happened to me, it would be with my hand and that it would be right. like, oh, fuck. it's, it, it's so, it's the one thing that it attacked that it's like, man, it went for, it went for the throat. <laughs> Cause it was like, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you're not going to be able to do this, this or this. So, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it is disheartening at first, but I see myself as I get more acquainted with what it is and what it does and, and how I get used to it, that I'm trying to find different methods to, um, you know, learn back what I wanted to do before and learn back what I was doing and, 
and get myself because a lot of it is just, man, I saw myself at this level. Now I'm at this level. Ah, you hate going backwards. You want to just you because you want to go forward in anything you're doing. I think I think it's just you know natural for for people to want to be like that. So it's taking a step back, but I, I want to go take those steps back just to get to there. So I'm I'm looking forward to trying new things for sure, and looking forward to get back to tattooing if I can when I'm not doing this crazy shit. <laughs> well, well, if and when you do, I would love to get a tattoo by you. I think it'd be kind of a cool I, experience. I would love it, man. All right. Oh. I mean, you can practice on me. I mean, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be blue in about ten years anyway, so you can just go off. <laughs> oh, I'd like to just be blue. <laughs> Please, <laughs> that'd be sick as hell. I'd love to do that. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. Yes. Uh, I guess my, my my last question is is is, is your persona, and yeah. it has to do with your persona, and it and I know this to be true, but you are a horror movie fan, and. Oh, yeah. So what I've always saw with you is like, a, a, it's like Hellraiser part seven. Like you're the new pinhead. That's the kind of the vibe that I get yeah. from you, right? Yeah. And then you add the blood and the guts with the death matches. You know what I mean? How do, yeah. So I, my last question is, um, was it the horror movie thing that, that, that uh, inspired that? Or was it something, you know, where did you draw from? Yeah. Um, there was, you know, and there, yes, there was. And as, 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 um, I'm going to say that's the simple baseline. That's the simple baseline of where it was um, at one point. Um, Cause the movie I uh, actually drew from uh, even from the mask in the early parts. And even that development, when I was, when I started off, I was a baby face, like bright colored uh, Mohawk, like, I was, Oh yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> and like it slowly declined. And, and I, and I thought, I thought about, where that decline came from and where it slowly started to be like, man, now he's not so happy anymore. Now he's slowly, slowly starting to fall apart a little bit as he goes through life. And as he gets deeper and deeper into the world that he knows it, that he's starting to crumble and fall apart while losing his mind all in the same sense. He's also becoming what is called like a simple, like a puppet master of sorts, like to where it's, it, it is like move, moving chess pieces and, and, and playing with the chessboard and seeing what outcome he can make just for the sole fact that he enjoys watching it per, uh, happen in front of him, not for any reason for personal gain, just for the fact that like some people and, and, and I guess in um, the best terms, I guess on a broader scale is like when uh, they had the Joker saying stuff about watching the world burn. Some people just want to watch it burn. And, and I loved um, the idea of that. I love that through no personal gain, through no personal, um, just to live a life and have gone through or to uh, not care about any of that, just, just to see the outcome of it, I thought was a really fun play off that. So that's where, I mean, even to now, to this point, that's where that character is. That character is to the point where he doesn't really care. Now, does he want uh, a little bit of credit? Yeah, he wants a little bit of that. You know, he wants people to denounce themselves uh, for who they are and say that, you know what, maybe that's me and that's not you anymore. Mm. That sort of thing. So that's that's the fun part. But the horror was there. Uh, the baseline of that was from a movie called uh, The Hills Run Red. Uh, the Hills Run Red uh, inspired the baby face mask. Wow. And, and I had a guy sculpt the mask. It's very similar to that one, almost to a T. And then after a while, I started modifying it and I started adding it. And then I started saying about, and it's funny because nobody knows where uh, I started saying the hashtag to get the horns thing. When I started, uh, I was trying to wrestle uh, 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 Havoc at uh, Black Craft Wrestling and stuff like that. The, the get the horns thing is from the, and one of my favorite movies ever is from the Breakfast Club. <laughs> That's where that came from. And then people go, holy shit. They're like, really? I mean, yes. <laughs> you mess with the bull boy, you get the horns. Right. And, and that's where that developed from. So there, there is this, this movie uh, baseline of everything, but then like I try to, I try to pull it out and take it to more psychology and, and things like that. And I, the most I've gotten that I really appreciate out of anything with my character that people had said was that they believe it. So yeah. like that to me, it's like, that is the end all be all right there. If you, you're telling me that, then, then good. Thank you. Like if I'm making it believable, then 
I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like then I've, I've portrayed it in the right way. You know what I mean? Well, that's, I mean, that, cause that's the thing, you know, I see AEW now and I think about like how a G raver would fit in and, you know, the closest thing that they have to kind of like a kind of a scary guy is Malachi. Right. But I see yeah. G raver is like that plus that yeah. times, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they need that scary freaking heel. You're not like one of those heels that like is going to be like, you know, punch you and then run out of the ring. You know what I mean? No. Unless you're trying to get into inside their head. And even then you're not acting like, like the pussy, you know, kind of heel. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm just, you know, the evolution of G raver with the name, the whole thing, it all makes sense. And, and, and all I can say to you is, is that it's not like a dusty roads, you know, making the polka dot gimmick work. It's like, you've just made the thing work no matter what. And you are believable. So that's all I wanted to say, but, no. and I really, really appreciate you, you know, taking the time. I know it was last minute. No, Super I, stoked that you came. As soon as you said, and, and KG hit me up, I was like, without a shadow of a doubt, because if anybody was going to hit me up for any of these, and it was, like I said, it was you because the first person to, to because it happened on the show too, like it was at the end of the show and KG came up to me and said about that. Uh, that meant the world to me right there. Had you said that maybe like, you know, even four days later, it would still mean the same, but it meant more to me then because I was like, holy shit. Like, I know he appreciates wrestling. Like, so the fact that he saw through all of that and saw the, the big picture when it was, you know, when there was a bigger picture of crazy crap in front of him and he saw that, now I'm like, Phew. all right. <laughs> <laughs> right on, homie. So I appreciate that, man. Huge thank you to Kevin Gill and, G and uh, GCW for making this interview happen. Make sure you check out GCW on Fight TV, uh, YouTube. There's lots of stuff on YouTube. Uh, don't forget Wrestling Perspective. Rate, subscribe, download anywhere you get videos and podcasts. That's where we are. We're also on Fight. Where can people find you, G Raver? Ah, uh, you can find me on all social media platforms. Of course, uh, you can find me on Facebook, just under Brandon Graver. I have not. I tried to give up on hiding that name like a long time ago, but uh, you can find me, Stacey Graver, uh, on Instagram, um, at Stacey Graver at uh, Twitter. And you can find me on there, or um, I believe it's just. Let me just double check, and then it's just add. There's either at G River on Instagram and then there's at Stacy River um, on Twitter and stuff like that. So you can reach me on those platforms. And then of course, Game Changer Wrestling has their platform too at Game Changer Wrestling on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I think they're mostly active on Twitter. That's the most you'll see on there and stuff. So you can figure out uh, all the future events coming forward and so on. And don't forget, November 26th, Lars, yeah. you're dropping something new. We're excited. Can't wait. I've Listen, I'm not sure if I can tell people I've heard it. I've heard it, and I'm a fan of yours, always have been, more than Thanks. Jason Kindle, and I'm going to say that every single time. <laughs> it's phenomenal. It is worth the money. I liked it so much, I'm actually going to buy it because even though I got it for free. You better, fucker. I got kids. <laughs> <laughs> Peace later, everybody. All right, listen. Thank you, yeah, it's e Raver, so much for educating me in this walk. I really enjoyed getting to know you today. No, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Like I said, I'm always uh, down to tell these stories. And I think, like, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm always like, man, if people only knew the things that I know. <laughs> and, and I, I'm like the least suspect character. So, like, it's, it's always good being that guy. <laughs> Fair enough. Hell yeah. <laughs>